and whom your Redeemer is. All I tell you is meet me at Galilee. So grateful that you have joined with us this Sunday morning for our morning our morning worship. God has been good, and we're certainly grateful that you have taken the time to join with us. To my guests, first-time viewers, God bless you. Hope that you will find encouragement from our worship service today and join us back again and participate on all the activities that we have on our Facebook, whether it be Wednesday or Friday. Thank you so much for allowing the Lord to lead you to this worship service this morning. And to Galilee, God bless you. Grateful that you have tuned in once again to our virtual worship service. We are thankful for what all God has been doing in all of our lives. And we thank you for continuing your support by watching what we have allowed the Lord to lead us to do in worship service on Sunday, on Wednesday, and on Friday. And whatever other opportunity God opens up, thank you, Galilee, for continually being right on the spot. And thank you also for those that have continued to give in our cash app. God bless you. Thank you so much for allowing the Lord to touch you to share in this ministry the guest of ours through cash app. And Galilee, thank you for signing up and continually giving on Givelify. God bless you. Thank you so much for not allowing us not coming together to stop your giving. Amen. Appreciate it. And thank you so much for continually giving to your church, but more importantly to the Lord and for his work to be done. And those that mail in, God bless you. We get it. Amen. Whether it's once a week, once a month, you mail in, God bless you. Thank you so much for continually being faithful in your mailing of your tithes and offering. And those that call the church and would like a trustee or deacon to come pick it up, God bless you as well. We want to have all opportunities available so that we can have worship totally, as well as not just here visually, but also in our giving also. So God bless you, and thank you all. Let's pray for those gifts that are going to be given this day. Father, we thank you for all the gifts that have been given. We thank you for those that are about to give. Father, we thank you for everything that you have allowed us to do through these unprecedented times, Father, but you have continually touched our hearts in our giving, and thank you, Father. Thank you for everything that has been given, and may it be used for the betterment of thy kingdom. In your son Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen. I want to again say happy birthday to all those born in the month of December. This is the last month. Amen. The last month of the year. And we are grateful, grateful that God has brought us to this point. Here we are, first Sunday in December. And God is still in the blessing business. Amen. Pandemic or not, we are grateful to continually be able to come to you in worship and in praise to our Father. This morning, I want to draw our attention to the book of Luke. That's Luke, the 14th chapter. And I want to begin with the 12th verse. Luke, the 14th chapter, beginning with the 12th verse. Then said he also to him that bade him, When thou 
make us a dinner or a supper. Call not thy friends, nor thy brethren, neither thy kinsmen, nor thy rich neighbors, lest they also bid thee again, and a recompense, recompense he be made thee. But when thou makest a feast, call the poor, and the maimed, and the lame, and blind, and thou shalt be blessed, for they cannot recompense thee. For thou shalt be recompensed at the resurrection of the just. And then, and when one of them that sat at meat with him heard these things, he said unto him, Blessed is he that shall eat bread in the kingdom of God. Then said he unto him, A certain man made a great supper and bade many, and sent his servant at supper time to say to them that were bidden come for all things are now ready and they all with one consent began to make excuses the first said unto him I have bought a piece of ground and I must needs go and see it I pray thee have me excused and another said I have bought five yoke of oxen I go to prove them I pray thee have me excused and another said I have married a wife and therefore I cannot come so that servant came and showed his Lord these things then the master of the house being angry said to his servant go out quickly into the streets and lanes of the city and bring in hither the poor and the maimed and the halt and the blind and the servant said, Lord, it is done as thou hast commanded, and yet there is room. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading and the hearers of his word. Shall we pray? Father, we thank you for bringing us to this moment in time that we prepare our hearts and our minds to receive the word that you have prepared to be delivered this day. Father, we thank you for growing us, stretching us, preparing us for those tasks that you have in store for us. Lead us at this moment that we hear your word and understand your direction. In your son Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Amen. So, before I come with the message, we're going to have a selection, and then following that wonderful selection, I'll be back with the word for this morning. God bless. Praise Him, praise Him, praise 
Amen. Praise him. Amen. You heard earlier, we'll be coming from the book of Luke, the 14th chapter. You heard 12 through the 22nd verses being read, but I'd like to draw your attention to uh, verse 16, uh, beginning with verse 16. If you would uh, go with me to verse 16. And begins to read, Then said he unto him, A certain man made a great supper and bade many, and sent his servant at supper time to say to them that were bidden, Come, for all things are now ready. And they all, with one consent, began to make excuses. First said unto him, I have bought a piece of ground. I must needs go and see it. Pray thee, have me excused. And another said, I have bought five yoke of oxen, and I go to prove them. I pray thee, have me excused. And another said, I have married a wife, and therefore I cannot come. So that servant came and showed his Lord these things, and then the master of the house, being angry, said to the servant, Go out quickly into the streets and lanes, of the city and bring in hither the poor and the lame, maimed and the halt and the blind. This morning I want to journey with the subject. Don't make any more excuses. Don't make any more excuses. Yeah, I shared with you last Sunday that the Lord has placed on my heart for a message of a series of messages relating to surrendering, surrendering to him, getting out of the way and allowing God to have his way, surrendering to him. When I was drawn to this text today, I, I, I got in it just a little bit, and, and I wanted to call it something else. Uh, I wanted to say, stop making excuses. That's what I wanted to say. Uh, but the Lord said, that's not what I want you to call that. Because, see, for me to say stop making excuses, that's me getting in it. Uh, he said, I, I, I want this subject to be in reference to don't make any more excuses. Because that speaks to the interest that we're going to talk about today in relation to surrendering. The thing that was so empowering about this message in this text is that Jesus is dealing with individuals that feel that they are above everyone else. The, the, the early part of this, this chapter is speaking to him, directing his conversation to those that think they're better than others. And one of the things that he's relating in this parable that we're going to discuss starting at verse 16 is that he, he, he's basically describing the Jewish people, the Israel people, the Israelites, and how they have been given a pre-invitation being the children of Abraham, being, being a part of the chosen, they were given a pre-invitation to the dinner table. They were given a, 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 if you want to say, an open door to be with the Father. But yet, with that open door, they did not choose to go to the party, go to the, to the supper. And how, by them not choosing to go, 
the party, the supper still went on. And it was opened up to all of those. In case you haven't caught it yet, we are that lame, that maimed. The ones that are out in the streets, in the lanes, that's us. The ones that are not of Israel, but the ones that are of the Gentile relationship. That was, oh, that's what happened. Because of the invitation not being received by those who got a pre-invitation, the invitation went out to all of us. What I want to labor with today is why the invitation wasn't received. I don't know about you, but how many of you know somebody that, that, that when you invite them to church, the first, well, I, I would, but I, I, I don't have a suit to wear. Oh, I've heard that one before. I would, but I, 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 don't, I get off from work right at the time that, that your service is. I would, but... Uh, I, 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 I've got another appointment. That's a, there's always an excuse. Why? Or, or let, let's let's let, let, let's take it more into the surrendering because because that's a surrendering and coming in, into a relationship and fellowship with. But what about the surrendering when God is is uh, is in, is is putting something on you that He needs you to do? When he's putting a, a, a push in you. Some of you know what I'm talking about. Some of you know about that, 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 that when, you, when you can't rest. Because he is designing something different than where you're sitting right now. And because you don't want to surrender to the invitation. Because that's what it is. Sometimes we see the task that we have to do as monumental, as I can't do that. Or, or would you be the president? Oh, I can't be the president. Would you? Oh, I can't lead that group. Oh, I can't be. I can't do. Oh, I can't do that. Oh, well, okay. Would you just be a member of the usher? Oh, I can't do that. Always something in the way that we make. Oh, let me see. Don't let me. Don't let me get away from the top from the subject. There's always an excuse that we seem to have when God has given a pre-invitation to get in the party, a pre-invitation to come to the supper, a pre-invitation to get involved in his activity, we seem to always, most of the time, sometime, have an excuse. And the Lord is seeking us to let go of our excuses and give him a surrendered self. Allow him to show us how life was never what we thought it could be. What, but when we surrender to the master, he will open doors that we could not have imagined would take place. When we understand that when the Lord gives you a pre-invitation, and what I mean by the pre-invitation is that sometimes you are invited to the party. Now, in this text, the table has been set. Everything has been laid, and they have been invited to something that was already done. But there might be an occasion where you got a pre-invitation to somewhere that you didn't see that was set up. But the Lord has you as the one to go in to do the setting up. And there's a fear. There's an excuse that might be used. But what we have to do is recognize and realize that when the father, the father now, when he in makes an invitation, he's already got it fixed. We don't have to see it. We don't have to understand it. We don't have to believe it. But what we got to do is believe in him. I can't tell you how many times he's directed me to do something and I don't believe in what he's directed. But because I do believe in him, I know that my unbelief in what he's asked me to do is not going to stop what he wants done because his will will be done when I surrender to him and not to myself. In this text, we see that the gentleman has prepared a feast and it 
his pre-invited people, he has invited them and told them to come in. It's time we can eat. And we see excuses being made. We see the first excuse. Got some land. I got to go check on. Can I be excused? I got some land I got to go check on that I purchased. Now, let me forget that part. Now, who going to buy land without first seeing it? And if you've already seen it and purchased it, then you can definitely go to the dinner because nothing is going to happen to the land. But because you don't want to participate for whatever reason it might be, you come up with an excuse of the land. You come up with a physical excuse. You have a problem yielding to the master. When I yield to him, it's not about what I've gotten. It's not about what I think I want to have. When I yield myself to him, it's about giving him everything and allowing him to dictate what takes place. This individual could not let go of a physical attraction to something that he had not even come in contact with, but it was more important than showing up at the Lord's Supper. How many of us have had opportunity after opportunity, as I said last week, time, talent, and treasure, how many of us have had an opportunity to give of our time but because of issues that we put into place, we say, can I get an excuse? But not only did an individual speak to some land that he supposedly purchased that he needed to go check on, can I be excused? But then there was another one that said, I bought five oxen and I need to go check them. Can I be excused? Now who gonna buy oxen without seeing them first so here he is speaking to a situation that he's hoping will be a deterrent because see oxen were valued property at the time plowed fields brought prosperity into the family how many of us get caught up on what we think, oh, this job, oh, this job is too great. Oh, this, 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 this money that I'm expecting to receive from inheritance or whatever is too great. How many of us get caught up on what we perceive to be a prosperous situation and deny what God is asking of us? He is looking at the fact of having an opportunity to gain something more valuable than sitting at the table. How many of us have given the Lord an excuse when he's asked to give of our time, our talent, or our treasure? How many of us have stated, I can't tell you how many times I heard, oh, I would give, but you know what? I got too many bills to pay. I would give, but I spent everything over here, and it's Christmas season. Y'all know, know the story. And I didn't bought all this. I, I, I didn't been uh, Mr. Santa Claus to everybody, so I don't have nothing for the church. How many situations have you been? And you don't come to the table. You don't come to the feast. I'm going to tell you what happens here at the end if you don't come to the feast. Because, see, excuses prevent you from seeing the magnification of what God has in store for your life. When you submit yourself to you, you miss having a personal relationship with the Father. I have to understand I have to yield myself to him. And in my yielding, I have to develop a personal relationship with the Father. I have to understand, just as I preached last week with Jesus, 
asking, nevertheless, I have to understand that when the Lord has given me and when you have been called by him, when you are a child of the king, you have a pre-invitation to the table. You have an invitation that will not fail. How many of us will hold that invitation and show up at the table and won't let prosperity cause me not to show up, won't let physical attraction stop me to come up? Or what about the third one? It says, I can't come because <laughs> I just had got married and have a wife. Now, you talk about an opportunity of witnessing. This would have been a good time for you to bring your wife to the table. But yet, I can't come. How many of us have walked away from the invitation God has given us? Because we chose to see something else we chose to recognize something else we chose not to see the power of God but the, but, 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 but the love I have for something else we have to understand when we yield to him we have to begin to work on a desired personal relationship that understands the power of God. When we understand the power of God, when we understand he can do those things, those impossible things that can't happen, that's when he asks you to come to a table that you don't see set. You know that my powerful God can set a table. As I stated to you before, the interesting thing about this is the table was set. How many of you have accepted Jesus Christ into your life, but yet you have not yielded to the master? You don't have a personal, oh, you know who God is. You show up here and there. You tune in to what we might be showing on Facebook now and then. You give when you feel compelled to give. But how many of you have walked away? Because see, those are the excuses when you don't yield to him. Those are excuses when you don't develop a personal relationship. It should bother you when you don't come in fellowship with your family. It should bother you when you haven't given to the master in over a month. It should bother you when you haven't volunteered to do something, we have been blessed to be able to do a few things this past month. How many brought something? How many volunteered? How many? You, it should bother you when you don't participate at the dinner. It should bother you because what happens Happens the same thing that happened to the man that had the land, the same thing that happens to the one that had the oxen, and the same thing that happened to the one that said, I got a wife. You know what happened? What happened was, it says, the master sent the servant out and said, go out into the streets, go out into the lame, and get them to come to the table. And just in case you don't know any further than that, when he did that, he came back and said, there's still room at the table. And he said, I tell you what, my table always has room. Because see, at that time, Israelites thought there was only so many going to heaven. And heaven was only a small place. But they need to know by Jesus, he's saying, heaven is a mass place and it's open for all of those not just the Israelites but open to the Gentiles and I want you to know your excuses you don't want to be left off the table you don't want to be left from the party you want to be involved by not giving excuses but accepting and yielding developing a personal relationship 
and understanding that the power is from God, not from you. When we develop a yielding, personal, an acknowledgement of a powerful God, the things that he does in our life, the things that he does, you know what he does? When you do that, he takes a small group of folks that come together on a fourth Sunday in March, I got to tell you the story, with a cell phone and, and, and one stand and allow them to broadcast to all of the, the members and then some and continue to do that. And then, you know what it does? Then as you stay faithful in that cell phone, the Lord touches the hearts of those that don't even think they know how to do it. But God has touched them to get involved and they come and bring programs to the platform. They come and bring suggestions of new equipment to the platform. And then the question comes into play. All of that sounds good, but how are we going to get it when we don't know if we got it to get it with? But then you got to stay faithful because, see, you realize that the table wasn't set by you. You was just invited to the table. And the one that set the table already got how you going to get. What you looking at me on now wasn't what we started with. But what you see me on now is what happens when you get faithful to the master. The way you see me come in and out through a program on a laptop, that's because God has shown if you be faithful, I'll do it. We have to understand a pandemic or nothing else stops God. He's all powerful. What he asks of us is surrender. Well, Lord, I would, but I can't, I can't get around. Surrender. Lord, I would, but I'm not feeling good. Surrender. Lord, I would, but I don't think I have enough. Surrender. Don't make excuses. Don't make any more excuses. But trust God. Because if you think you don't have it and he's sending you to it, that letting you know right then he don't need what you got. He already got it. And that's what we are in service for, to be used as an instrument. Because just like I preached last week, when his son was in that garden and he didn't want to be separated, he prayed, but then he said, nevertheless, that nevertheless saved you and me. That nevertheless meant that he was submitted to whatever the father wanted to do. And that was to be a sacrifice, to go to the cross for you and me, to give up his life not they take it but him give it up and three days him raise or be risen by the father from the grave with all power in his hands because of his submission to the father that enabled us to be in the same position to submit to him to know that we have a master that loves us unconditionally Agape love and wants nothing but the best for all of us. Don't let your furnace be viewed as your end. Your furnace is being positioned so that God can be magnified. When the three Hebrew boys went into the fiery furnace, they looked in there and they saw not just three, they saw four. And when they came back the next day and said, hurry up and open up. And they came walking out there and they just didn't walk out without burns on them. They didn't even smell like the fire. That's the kind of God we serve. We serve a God that when we yield to him, 
when we develop a personal relationship with him and when we understand the power that he possesses, you will come out not even smelling like he put you in. That's the God we serve. I ask you now, yield to him. Develop a personal relationship with him. Study his word. Pray. And understand that wherever he's sending you to through your invitation, it's not because of your power, but it's because of his. And trust him. If you don't know him today, this is your opportunity to know him. And to understand that you don't have the answers, and he didn't ask you to have it. He said, I am the answer. Put your hand in Jesus' hand and utter the words of my Savior, my Messiah, my Master. Take me. Mold me, shape me as you want me to be. I accept you into my life. And I accept you as my redeemer. And you have been saved. And I pray he send you to 2624 East 25th Street. And someone laughed and told me, well, Pastor, you keep saying that. You don't know how many, but I don't, it don't matter. I welcome anyone that wants to come join in a fellowship of praise to God. A fellowship of praise to the master that gave of his life. I invite you. You have a pre-invitation to join us. Father God, we thank you for your love. We thank you for your encouragement. But most of all, we thank you for your son, Jesus. That you allowed to say, nevertheless become our advocate become our salvation guide us father as we go through these blind times lame times but we give our trust and faith to you thank you for what you have done and you continue to do in all of our lives Thank you for blessing those that were in the hospital that you sent home. Thank you for blessing those that are at home. Thank you for blessing a whole family, this nation as a whole. Keep us, Father. In the mighty name of your son, Jesus, we ask it all. Amen. Amen. Don't make any more excuses. Yield yourself. Develop a personal relationship and understand the power of our Father. God bless you. This is the first Sunday, and we are going to observe our Lord's Supper. And so I ask you at this time, you can get your Lord's Supper and prepare yourselves to observe the Lord's Supper with us. Now, as I stated, this past week, if, if you didn't get up here Friday to get the Lord's Supper, you can use a juice, a cracker. We're going to pray. We're going to bless it. I don't want you to miss the opportunity to observe this Lord's Supper. So if you would, get your prepared supper. by my invitation that we could observe what Jesus Christ had done for us. As he stated to his disciples, no longer were they going to observe the Passover. This was going to be his supper. This was going to be in relation to his, his, his giving of his body and his blood so that we all would be redeemed back to him. This is a sacred moment, a sacred time, because this is a time 
that we don't allow anger to be in the way. This is the time that we don't let malice get in the way. This is the time that we don't let envy and vengeance. This is the time that we open our heart. As I've been preaching the last two Sundays, this is the time of surrender. If you haven't surrendered, don't partake of this. Because as the word says, you don't want damnation on your soul. This is a point where you have surrendered yourself, given of yourself. And this is what we have come to do at this moment in time. Bow with me as I pray for both the wine and the bread. Father God, we thank you for allowing us to come to remember the sacrifice that Jesus made for all of us. This we do in remembrance of him, remembrance of his body that was given as we partake of the bread and remember his blood that was shed as we partake of the wine, remembering him. Father, thank you for providing salvation for each and every one of us. And we partake of both the bread and the wine in remembrance of him. In your son Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. This time we will commune with the bread followed by the communing of the wine. Amen. God bless you. I thank you so much for being a participant in this virtual worship service. God has been good and continues to be good. And I want to thank you for all the things that you have done this past month and as we move into the Christmas season, into Jesus Christ being born, that is the reason for the season. And we want to be joyful in that. So God bless you. I pray to see you on Wednesday, 7 o'clock. We in Acts. And it's getting hot. So y'all need to join us, 7 o'clock. And then also you all are invited back at 7 o'clock on Friday for Friday Fellowship, where we can thank God for all he has done that week. God bless you. I appreciate you. Love you all. And I pray that as you step forward, God shows you what he has in store. All right, Darnell. Lord, bless you and keep you. Lord, make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. Lord, lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Let every heart say, Amen. God bless. Love you all. Because y'all already know in whom your Redeemer is. All I tell you is meet me at Galilee.